Welcome to another episode of ECTV's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today my guest is Andrea Racine. Andrea, yes. thanks for coming to chat with me. Absolutely. You're very welcome. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to come and talk about something I'm very passionate about. That's great. So the first thing I always want my guests to do is just tell a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, where you went to school, your educational background, and just okay. so we can get to know you a little bit. Sure. Um, well, I live uh, in a place called Sunshine, Pennsylvania, on Sunshine Mountain, at the top of the mountain. Wow. I know, and it's beautiful up there. It's all countryside and a lot of family up there. It's mostly my family, and um, I grew up there most of the time, and then we moved around a little bit, Chambersburg. Then I lived near Boston, Massachusetts for a while, and then came back to Pennsylvania, and settled right back into the same homestead house that my father oh, wow. built on Sunshine Mountain. Um, and it's beautiful up there. I love it. I have a lot of family. Um, I then moved to Dunmore area for about 10 years. And when I was there, that's when I started my mural business. Wow. I was in need of a job because I was new to the city. And pretty much I knew that I could paint something fairly quickly and get some money. So what I did is I went around door to door to every store in the city of Scranton, giving them my card, telling them, you know, I'm an artist. I'm new to the area. If you give me a chance, let me do a mural for you. I'll give you a great deal, you know. And I met a guy named Demario. <laughs> he has Essence of Paradise. And he said, you know what, my wife has a Reiki studio. She would love a mural of, Niag or of um, Victoria Falls in Africa. And I said, absolutely, I can do it for you. And he said, when can you be there? So I went over and I did that. And from there, it just blossomed out. And I, I have paintings all over in Calabria's Pizza restaurant in Dunmore. Um, I've got murals all over the city, uh, all kinds of pizza places. I've, I can do Tuscany in my sleep wow. because I've done Tuscany so many times. Um, Venice, I've done a lot of Italian scenes, but I am half Italian, so <laughs> it comes naturally a little bit. Um, and I'd love to get over there just to see Italy in person since I've painted it so much. Everyone thinks I've That'd been be there awesome. because I paint like I've been there because I really like to put the energy into it when I paint it. And I said, no, I would love to be there. I can't imagine how the paintings would look if I was actually there in person. Um, but they said, well, don't go because they'll keep you. They won't let you come back. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'd love to make it there and see some of my family over there. Uh, so then after Dunmore, my father had a stroke. So I moved back to take care of him, back to Sunshine Mountain. And now I still reside in, in the same house that my father built. And um, he's in a wonderful place, Bonham's out there. And so I took over the house and I live up on Sunshine Mountain where I paint and create. I also had an art studio for a couple of years doing the paint classes mm. to, for people. And I still do paint classes even though because of the flood we had to shut down. Um, the building got knocked down. I continue just doing it kind of freelance, going to different locations and setting up and doing the paint events, paint classes. And I love teaching children especially. Yeah, They're so excited. They are just so beyond creative. We are born creative. We unlearn creativity as we age. I say the same thing. As we go through life. Yeah. So seeing that fresh creativity coming out of children is actually super inspirational as an artist. That's that if, energy you can't yes, get from anywhere absolutely. else. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so fresh and pure, straight from, from spirit, that they're so connected that they just create. They're ready to just throw that paint onto the canvas. They just are, they want to go at it. Then as we age, we're older, and as we get older, I see the adults sit there and second guess every brush stroke they put on there because they hold themselves yeah. back so bad because they've disconnected inside from that creative energy that, yeah. that flows, the, the energy that creates worlds, yeah. the energy that creates your entire life around you. That's what it's all about. It's connecting with that source energy inside of yourself yeah. that lets it flow. People say that artists are the translators from spirit into physical reality. Wow. And I believe that. I never heard that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So what, what got you into mural art? Um, well, I was asked to do a mural for a family member when I was younger, um, and it was pretty much I was in college, and I hadn't 
ever painted or drawn anything my whole life until I was 17 and I was in college. I went to LCC and I took the computer arts program wow. and I was required to take an art, a painting class. And uh, the first, the first uh, project that I had, I turned it in after I had done it and it was like a sci-fi cover, chaos mode, and there's all like airbrushing and the sea creature and a girl riding it. And, and I turned it in and he, the teacher was known for never giving A's to anyone. He was a really hard teacher to please and he was known for that. And he actually had a duck on the stamp, on the US stamp, Molnar his name was oh, wow. at LCC. And he looked and looked at my painting and he said, who have you been studying under? And I said, what? <laughs> this is the first time I ever picked up a brush and put it to a canvas in my life. I've never, wow. I'm just doing this because they're making me <laughs> for the, for the computer. The yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he said, you know what? You are an artist. You are a natural artist. And when he told me that, a light bulb went off in my head. Mm. I, I said, huh, I am. I think I am. And I accepted that. I think a lot of the thing with we artists is we don't accept our worthiness yeah. of so being an artist. That was at 17? Yes. And but prior to 17, you really Nothing. weren't interested Never. in art. Never, no. No, I was kind of creative and stuff. Yeah. And my mother was an excellent pianist. She could listen to a song one time and sit down and play it note for note on mm. the piano. So she had like a musical ability and I believe that's another form of creative art. It really is. So that I believe transpired into painting for me. So where it was music for her, I believe it's painting for myself. So I, I believe that I got it from her. And it only took one assignment and one teacher's critique to really spark your to interest. Just dawn to, on, yeah. it, it dawned on me like a light went off. And when he said that, I felt resonance within myself with mm. it. I felt, yes, that sounds right. Yeah. That absolutely sounds right. So I kept going with it. And then, then I did a mural and it came out nice. <laughs> and everything I look at, I would take in the detail of it for future use in a mm -hmm. painting. And I just kept doing that, keep taking in detail. Every, I'm still learning everything yeah. I look at goes into a filing system for future use yeah. in a painting. And so m me and you are, completely on the same page when we say that every human is born an artist. There is yeah. something innate to the human psyche that drives us to mark and create marks. We came um, into this time space experience to be creators. Yeah, and we, like you say, we have to unlearn this thing uh, to be you know, put into this cookie cutter wedge of society and it kind of diminishes our true creative nature. Mm -hmm. But for, for a person to find their purpose at such a young age is amazing. Cause I, I know some people who are in their thirties and still don't really know like, oh, yes. <laughs> what is my thing? You know, what is my contribution to the human story? Mm -hmm. And so for an artist to understand that at an early age is, is this is what I can contribute to society is, is my view and vision of the reality that we all share. And so that's amazing. It, I did venture off into other little things, cake making and jewelry making, all kinds of creative stuff also. I was a, a cosmetologist for 10 years mm -hmm. doing hair also. That's kind of painting, painting yeah, yeah. hair. I tell people I'll paint anything that doesn't run away fast enough. <laughs> I've painted everything and anything you can think yeah. of and tried so many different creative ventures and cooking and a lot of anything that requires any amount of creativity. I've tried it out because you never know. Yeah. You've got to try it all, see what you like, see what you don't like, and then go from there. Yeah, well, art imitates life and vice versa. So. Everything in, in life is a creative process. The way you do your hair, the yes. way you uh, put on your attire and your clothing. We are the creators the, of our lives. The way you season your Absolutely. food, culinary arts. And, and so it's, it's, it, art permeates every facet of our lives and some people just it's don't really like see It's almost like training wheels to teach us that we can also do this with our lives around exactly. us. Exactly. Where we place our focus, what we are thinking about when we're looking around at what we can create, the possibilities that we're allowing ourselves to see, 
it starts with art and it can permeate throughout the rest of your entire mm. life if you let it. Yeah. So. And I want to give a special shout out to Demario at EP Fashion <laughs> and Aesthetics Demario. for giving our friend <laughs> one of her first mural assignments. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. And uh, so after after you got that mural uh, job from Essence of Paradise, what what came after that? Well, I started painting at Calabria's Pizza on Drinker Street in Dunmore. Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing some Italian murals for them, and I did uh, Venice on the wall in their restaurant, which they have amazing authentic Italian food. Oh, wow. If you're ever looking for authentic Italian food, Pete, the guy who owns it, he's from Italy. He makes authentic Italian fresh food. It's so good. But he has, I have murals all over the walls in there, and my, I, my paintings are there. And even the ceiling as you walk in the back is all painted with the sky that oh, I wow. painted. And uh, worked on a lot of different things there. And they have Luna Banquet Hall across the street. So then I continued on over there. And I even did stuff like marbleizing and resining the tops of their bar top. Oh, wow. And I do a lot of furniture projects also. I like getting into building things and constructing stuff that I can then paint on top of. So um, so we got La Una Banquet Hall all up and running, and there's artwork over there. And from there, like, I got little jobs here and there. People would hire me to do different paintings, and and it just blossomed. I've done a lot of paintings. It's it's crazy you look back at some of the pictures when you're looking through your yeah, folders to see how much work you've how accomplished. much you actually yeah. have done through the years yeah so so how has the pandemic uh changed your life or influenced your life with pertaining to your art has it have you uh implemented different concepts and themes into your art or different topics uh just because everyone's like going through this really weird mm -hmm. thing that we haven't really experienced yet? Well, um, I was hosting paint classes at the time and they were really taking off, getting going, and I had tons of paint classes booked and I had to cancel all of them at once. Mm. And then if I was watching the news or reading the Facebook posts of the anxiety people were putting out and the energy of the upset of everyone, it's hard not to kind of take that on a little bit. Yeah. You, you feel it. If you're an artist, you feel things yeah. in others. And when I was feeling these horrible feelings from others of the anxiety and the unrest and everything that was happening, it kind of, you have to take a step back. You kind of have to take a breath and refocus. You have to reconnect inside to, to source. You just, you need to kind of cut yourself off from all of that sound, all that noise that that brings that about and just center yourself again. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to take some time and just kind of refocus and recenter. So it did take a couple months to get back into the swing of creating again. Yeah. <laughs> if you feel any upset within yourself, it disconnects you from your own so source. This is it, very it true. disconnects you from spirit. And when you're disconnected from, from spirit and you try to paint, you kind of know what happens. Yeah. It's not going to work out right. You're going to paint in circles. Yeah. You're going to not like it. Yeah. You're going to end up covering over it. So um, like, just like if I'm having a bad day and I have to go to a mural job or something, I'll say, you know what? I'm going to be wasting my time and yours if I come in today and paint. I'm going to go and get right and come back and then mm. it's going to flow so much better and you will be so much happier yeah. with what I do. I can definitely understand that. Yes. It's like uh, another favorite saying of mine is um, historians tell us what happened and artists tell us how it felt. Yes. And so, mm -hmm. like you say, to have all these different emotions that you have absorbed from society itself and try to refocus and reevaluate the position that you're in right now, it can be quite challenging sometimes. And um, even even me, I, I try to keep my art as lighthearted and beautiful as possible, but there's, you can't escape negativity. Mm -hmm. There's no way from it. You just have to confront it and deal with it and analyze it for what it is. And so I really think that maybe one day in the future, I will try to do like more like, I don't want to say necessarily negative emotions, but uh, not as tranquil and, um, mm -hmm. you know, like the darker side of things sometimes. The great thing about 
what you would perceive as negative is it provides contrast to you to show you the flip side of something you're passionate yeah. about. If you feel strongly negative about something and you have a lot of energy behind that feeling when you look at something because you're feeling really bad about that, you should rejoice because that means that on the flip side of that, the opposite, you're going to feel very passionately positive about. Mm. It's going to ignite something within you. If something sets you off in one direction, the opposite direction is going to fill you with passion. Mm. And that is something to be rejoicing about, that you even feel that contrast. Yeah, yeah to have that, that open flow and communication with your emotions is, uh, is very, very important as an artist. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about some of the art that you brought in today. Um, <laughs> Does this piece have a title to it? I call it Route 66. Route 66. <laughs> uh, yeah. This I painted for my cousin, Dustin, and it was his birthday. Um, I myself am a rider. I've been riding since I was 19 years old. I oh, had wow. a Honda Nighthawk that I rode for almost 20 years. I loved it. And I just love the feeling of being on that bike, on the open road, not worrying about anything, just that free feeling. Mm. And I, it's the closest thing to flying. So I wanted to do a painting that kind of had that feeling of the freedom of just being out on the open road to go as fast as you want. There's no limits mm. to it. And so this is the Route 66 on, on the road, and the future is looking bright. It really is. Anything is possible. You don't see a future because that's yours to create. So, and I love this color blue. <laughs> I'm so partial to blue. It's, it's yeah. definitely one of my most used colors in my <laughs> artwork. So I'm, I always gravitate towards it. Yes. Um, your, your rendering of this is, is really, really good. I, um, yeah, I didn't want it to just be the side of a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. That's boring. <laughs> so I wanted to give it a little character, like almost like the bike just pulled up and, and squealed up yeah. in front of you and the, slid the and parked. The shortening is just like so awesome, this perspective right here. Yeah, um, yeah, it just pulls you right into it. Like almost like you could walk over and get onto it. Really it really does, it really does. And um, the the evening or dusk desert scene is is so nice. And, yeah. And the iconic Route 66. Yeah. <laughs> And I always like a little darkness for contrast, and somewhere in the painting, there's a little dark sky yeah. there, possibly an impending storm. You never know. But then, like you say, there's this very bright, bright destination future, yes. right ahead of you. Right. You know, mm -hmm. just continue with the journey. And yep, don't mind that. Yeah, don't mind the dark clouds. Keep okay. going. Yeah. Uh, so, so what medium do you use? Acrylic. A yeah, just acrylic. Wow. And. So it dries quickly. You yeah. have to move fast. So is this, this is all just brushwork? No, yeah, just no brush. Yeah, painting or yeah, just brushwork. Wow. Well, you, you, like I say, your technique is is superb. Um, Thank you. The chrome on the bike has that really sharp shine to it. <laughs> uh, and once again, just this perspective and how you captured the leather and everything. It just mm. and I'm. I've never been a rider, but my uncle is a is an avid fan of motorcycles, and he has a Harley that's very, very <laughs> similar, and it's actually yeah, blue. Yeah, a lot of and people, they look at this and they they feel that yeah. connection. And I could just see my uncle, and I was, I was, I was always kind of scared, but I would ride with him on the back, and so this right here does absolutely make me feel nostalgic. Yeah, uh, like I a really, vintage seating yeah, and everything. I really yeah. enjoy this. This is... Your art is so good. Thank you. Uh, let's check out something else you brought. Okay, so does this piece have a title? Uh, this one's Lion of Judah. It's kind of obvious. Uh, <laughs> yes. I did this one specifically for my the little Sunshine Church at the top, the very top of Sunshine Mountain. There's a little country church. It's a lot of family members up there. I love them. There's a great family. Um, and this was a gift for the church. They wanted a lion with the Lion of Judah on there. This is a, uh, and so the, the church actually commissioned you for this piece? Uh, I believe it was a gift okay. to them. I, I've done a lot of gifts. I really, I just enjoy giving the artwork away to people. Yeah. I always say, if I could have anything, it would be to have the ability to create art without putting a price on it, to be able to just give it freely to everyone. 
Um, but I know, you know, exchange of energy, money is also energy. Yeah. I understand all that. The happy buck, <laughs> as Bob Ross would say. But um, uh, I believe it was a gift, but I'm not 100% sure. They may have given me a gift yeah. of money back for it. But they love it, and it really takes up the space nice on the wall up there in the little country church. It is it is a, a very striking piece, and uh, the eyes of the lions are kind of glowing. Mm -hmm. Oh man, um, and like you say, to even for me, like uh, my biggest ambition with my art is for it to have a home and to be taken care of. Yeah, if I have to give it to somebody, it's just fine, you know. Yeah. As long as I know that it's going to be admired and you know just taken care of mm -hmm. and uh it's hard it's hard to part with pieces sometimes but if you know it's going to a good home yeah it's not it's not too difficult well, you put at all. your energy into it and it's like part of you part you of know? your energy goes right into it and and this piece is so big, like I have to actually <laughs> yeah, I'll get back lean from back it to it. <laughs> absorb all of this. Uh, how long I does it normally it to look like it was just glowing? It that's the first thing I I initially noticed is the eyes. You mm -hmm. captured that yeah. luminescence mm -hmm. so perfectly in the eyes. It it draws you in as the focal point, and then as much detail and layering as you did with the mane is. It's uh, very captivating. How, how long did it take to, to do this piece? Um, well, it depends on how it flows, but usually three or four days is my amount of time that it takes to do a canvas work of art with breaks in between, of course, yeah. to regenerate and <laughs> renew your, your creative energies and come back with fresh eyes. I like to, when I'm finished, before I actually call it, totally finished. I'll take a break for a day overnight, come back to it, take a final look at it yep. with fresh eyes because you'd be surprised at what a night of sleep will do to yep. change. Yep. You kind of forget where you think your mistakes are and look at it with some fresh eyes. Yeah. So I, I constantly do that. I'll, I'll, if I finish a piece and I think to myself it's finished, I won't sign it that day. Yeah, uh, and I'll just yep. wait a day or two, and like you say, just kind of sit with it mm -hmm. and just look at it a little bit more, and make sure. And the painting will tell you if it's finished or not. And yeah. If it's if it's not finished, it'll say, "Hey, hey, you missed this spot here." Yeah. And then you'll feel more comfortable <laughs> signing because the signature is like, that's the stamp of yep. approval that says, "Okay, that's, I'm done now." Everybody knows that if my signature is on it, then it's done. Yeah. Until then, it's not done. If I haven't signed it and they see it sitting in a corner and they think, oh, it's done, it's not it's done. Not, it's <laughs> almost done, but it's not yeah. quite finished yet. <laughs> and this, this piece is, is beautiful. Once again, your, your use of uh, colors um, to get that luminescence in there, even, even the lettering itself, did you freehand those letters? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, amazing, amazing piece. Uh, this is very beautiful. I can see why the, the church has a special spot mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> and once again, the darkness with the light, with light the yeah. contrast of extreme dark with extreme light yeah. really pulls you into the painting. I like to put a focal point of brightness somewhere in there to really draw you in. And people say that my, my artwork tends to just pull them right into it, like they're there almost. And that's what my intention was. That was the energy I put into it. So I get thrilled when I hear people say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Let's see what else you brought for us. Okay. Okay, we have one more beautiful, beautiful painting here. Uh, does this one also have a title? Yes, this one is Sunlit Sierra. Hmm. First, how did you come to that name, Sunlit Sierra? Uh, well, the Sierra mm -hmm. and just my imagination would be like as if the horses where the sun is setting and it's coming behind the horses and they're getting their last frolics in and mm. rolling in the dust or running around and playing. And then they see the viewer, they catch them watching them. Mm. And for a moment, they're looking at you watching them 
just being out yeah. before they go in for the night. The last bits of sunlight on them shining and warming. So, so they, they acknowledge the viewers here, and mm -hmm. we see you, but mm -hmm. we're still doing our little horsey thing here. <laughs> uh, and the contrast with the darks mm -hmm. and the lights. Yep, shadowing uh, from the setting sun with the dark, the blues. I love losing, I love using blue for shadowing. Yeah, it really that, that cool yep. that gives mm -hmm. it that coolness to it. And your your brush strokes are immaculate. I just thank you. <laughs> I can see the motion. You should see it under black light. Yeah. Oh, it's. <laughs> It yeah, it's black light? really bright under black. Oh light. wow! Yeah. Now, uh, what what brand uh, paints do you use? Because these colors are mm. very, very vibrant. Are you, do you not stick with whatever them? I could find? I'm the same <laughs> way. I'm the same way. I've Somebody come said, across some different things, and then you know how you'll get someone that knows you that says, "Hey, I, I somehow got all this paint from somewhere here. You can have it because yeah. I know you like to paint." So. I would get paint from so many different sources. Yeah. It's hard to say what's what, but. I'm the yeah. same way. I use uh, a couple of different brands, and that's because I, I think some, some brands have deeper, more lush pigments yeah. than yep, others. they do. And so that's why I just say this purple that you have here is just so nice. It's, I can just almost taste it, grapes looking at it. It, yeah, it might have been something from back when Dick Blick was around oh, even. Don't you miss them so I much? Do. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> I miss Dick Blick. But, um, yeah. I really, really enjoy your art and I'm definitely a fan of your art now. Uh, these these pieces are, are beautiful and um, so what are, what are you currently working on? Well, um, I'm currently teaching classes and then I'm doing larger scale projects. I have a client, Brian Gallagher, who he's had me, he's an ex uh, fighter bomber pilot. Oh, wow. from, uh, he was in there for a very long, long time, decades. And he's had me pretty much paint every surface of his house with a different mural. I did a commemorative mural of every place he was when he was in the service, when he was a pilot. Wow. And the whole wall, it just has something to represent every part of his duty when he was in, in the military. So that's a great mural I love. And then I also donated a mural to the Legion, and Shikshini Legion. It has every branch of the military during every war going across the whole wall, starting with the beginning and then going all the way, wow. ending at Vietnam, representing every branch of the military. That's at the Shikshini American Legion. That's an excellent mural to check out if anyone's anywhere near there. Um, and then I also do Addie's Art Therapy for veterans with PTSD. I raise money to get art kits to give to the veterans in the area. Um, they can get them through the uh, Shikshini American Legion. So you can go in, if you're a veteran, you can sign up and sign up to receive an art kit and then I would bring the art kit and drop it off and you can pick it back up at the Shikshini American Legion. Awesome. So I have a, the Addie's art program, therapy for veterans that I'm doing. And I'll be putting videos up for them also. So that way, not only do they, do they just get handed an art kit with a bunch of canvases in it and go, well, now what? They They'll be able to follow along. Yeah. And I'll I'll give them free access to all my online videos and works workshops and awesome. everything. So if if any of our viewers want to uh, follow you and continue to keep up with your art, how can they reach you? Um, well, you can follow me m myself, Andrea Racine, on Facebook. I also have A View for All on Facebook. Um, and then I have the Addie's Art Therapy on Facebook, and I also have AVU Paint Parties for people looking for the paint parties. But you can follow my personal page because that's where I really post most of my artwork um, that goes up all the time. I'm always posting artwork on my personal page, and I don't really get into anything else, just artwork mostly. So you can follow me on Facebook, Andrea Racine. Awesome. Thanks for <laughs> chatting with me today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. This has been another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussion. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today my guest was Audra Racine. Thanks for watching.